everybody. So we are the Hallmarkies Podcast, and we are here to talk about The Good Witch. This is very exciting. And uh, I'm Rachel, and Amber is here. Hi, everybody. Um, we're here to talk about the third episode of the fourth season, Daddy's Home. And uh, uh, yeah, so Amber, what did you think? What was your overall feeling of this episode? This episode, for the most part, was a huge snooze fest. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I actually, I didn't love this episode. It had some fun moments and some nice moments, but I had some issues with particularly what they did with a certain character that we'll talk about, but I didn't like. So here we go. All right. So uh, there's a couple different plot um, threads throughout the movie. And so we'll just talk about them, even though they're interspersed, we'll just talk about them in their, their section. Mm-hmm. So the, the biggest, obviously, got the name of the episode is Abigail. We got a cliffhanger in the last episode. She opens the door. There's her dad. Um, Ab- Abigail had been in foster care. Her dad had, had left her. And she never really got an explanation of where her dad was. And so her dad is back. And uh, he brings her a gift and invites her to have, to have dinner with him. And um, what were your sort of... What did you think at the beginning here with this sort of initial interactions between Abigail and her dad? Um, well, initially I was kind of like, Abigail, he's back, be nice. But then like the more they talked, I was like, no, yeah, he's the worst. Yeah. And his excuse like, oh, I just didn't want you to, you know, deal with me being the worst. If you were self-aware enough to know you were the worst, um, I have a brilliant idea. Don't abandon your family and just try to be better. Yeah. And, like, you should at least, like, tell your child that, like, you're in prison and that, like, I mean, I'm sure that's not comfortable, but she was right to be, like, there's no phones in prison. Um, And, like, yeah, like, legitimately, not only did he abandon her, but he's like, oh, yeah, and when I heard your mom died and you were just gonna go have to go be an orphan, I was like, "Mm, oh, well, ugh, he was, I did not. I did not feel any sympathy for this guy. No, I didn't either. And I felt bad for Abigail because, and you know, she's having to decide whether she wants to even talk to this guy. And, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm the queen at holding grudges. So I, <laughs> it's one of my fatal flaws that I, I work at constantly is just being able to let things go. And so I would not have been as forgiving as Abigail was. And, uh, and the thing, I guess that, so throughout the episode, like you're supposed to be buying that he's like this reformed person, hands up. Uh, he has this picture of Abigail that he's looking at kind of longingly. Um, and he buys all of these bikes for the women's council or something like that. And and then, uh, and then they go to a movie, they go see his girl Friday, which have you ever seen his girl Friday? I have. What'd you think? It was fine. Yeah. I enjoyed it. But then it. I loved when Abigail was like, oh, and I also love the Philadelphia story. And I was like, that's my jam. That's my jam. The Philadelphia story is yeah. literally my favorite movie of all time. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. They're both really fun movies. Um, and so, yeah, so she has this, she, she relents, lets him go to this movie with her. And then he, this is the part that really bothered me. He fishes into her purse and takes her credit card information and her personal information. And then like, we're supposed to, and then she finds out the next day that somebody has tried to take out a loan in her name for this house or whatever. Mm-hmm. And like, supposedly we're supposed to buy that he did all of this because he wanted it to be a surprise that he was buying a house for her and was going to put it in her name. Like, I'm sorry, if you are just barely repairing your relationship with somebody, you don't steal their their credit card information and get a loan in their name and commit bank fraud. Like, that is not okay. Yeah. (laughs) It's insane. It's literally the craziest thing I've ever heard. And we're supposed to just, like, accept that excuse? I mean, okay, first of all, it doesn't matter whose name's on the loan for the house to own it, it matters whose name is on the deed. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. like, there's no reason why he's like, oh, I wanted it to be your house, too. Does not make sense. Because he would just have to put her name on the deed. Like, yeah. it, no. And then, 
like if it just doesn't make any sense from a logical standpoint at all. And I kind of wished that they were like, they went full on Joey Potter at the end of Dawson's Creek season two or one, I think it's one where she like wears a wire and sends her dad to jail. Like that would have been very interesting and good. And I don't understand, like, is he coming back? I hope not. I hate yeah, him too because I, yeah, I definitely do not. I felt like the, the good witch writers wanted us to forgive him for this, that this was like a nice gesture. And I'm like, no, like it would have been, I guess, nice if he had like said, I'm thinking about doing this for you. Surprise. Um, and then they'd had a conversation about it. And then, but like, in no world, in no worldview is him stealing all of her credit card information. And as if you can get a loan on a house by, by just like some random person's credit card and as if like they're not going to the bank is not going to call about that like what and i i just i couldn't i could not swallow that I, I i don't like that the writers were trying to get us to let him off the hook so easily and that he's just like a a, a curmudgeon old man like i i had uh, my grandfather's passed away but i had a curmudgeon old man in my life and <laughs> that I that I had to deal with, and that's fine. Um, and I love him, uh, but he never tried to commit bank fraud. On me. <laughs> like that's two t- entirely different issues. Like her, like yeah, they they just took it too far. He should have just stayed like a grumpy old man that she had to learn to like let into her life. But like this whole bank thing was like terrible. Like I'm sorry, I don't buy it because if he that's how he's going about doing things. I really think he was just trying to defraud her and then he got caught. And so we came up with this lame story that we are expected to believe. I just, I can't get behind it. Yeah. And I don't believe that he would want to live in this house anyway with all these memories and like, like that's weird too. I feel like, I don't know. So basically this whole episode was difficult because I didn't trust the dad. I didn't like the dad. It wasn't good. And he's the worst. Yeah. And it yeah, was I, mostly him, the whole episode. Right. Yeah, I agree with you. I, that was my biggest problem. And uh, they just took it too far. They took it too far. And and uh, I don't think that Abigail should be made to feel like she has to have a relationship with this person who is stealing her credit card information out of her purse and trying to get loans in her name and treating her pretty terrible her whole life. Like, it, it, you, it is not good to have toxic people in your life. Like just because they're related to you does not mean you should have them in your life. Mm-hmm. And that's painful and it's hard, but that's a reality that a lot of people have to deal with is like, I just can't have this person that I'm related to in my life because they're a toxic indi- individual. And, um, you know, that's, 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 that's what happens sometimes. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I mean, I know that everything's light and fluffy for the, the good witch, you know, on, on Hallmark and whatever, but they should, they should have just kept him as a grumpy old man who, you know, like a, who gets kind of just trying to, trying to make things right. Like that would have been fine. But Like even going from the part where like he was in jail back in the day, mm-hmm. that's fine. Yeah. But the minute he even went into her purse for any reason. Right. It was like, we're done. Yeah. Agreed. I completely agree with you. Yeah. So there were a couple other plot points I that that we can talk about. So Cassie, uh, first of all, she's making chocolate chip waffles. And like Sam's like, no, you got organic sweeteners and some kind of wheat bran. And she's like, no, I'm having like sugar. <laughs> I was kind of funny. I'm like, yeah. What does he think? He thinks Cassie's some kind of hipster or something. Like um, she's always doing that. What are you talking about? <laughs> You know, like, she's always making food with weird stuff in it and always being like, ha-ha, this isn't actually meat. <laughs> I haven't noticed that, I guess. I forgot. It's like um, a whole little thing that they do. Is it? Cassie and Sam. Yes! Oh, I forgot. Okay. Um, so anyway, but it was funny, and they looked, I, you know, I'm a big breakfast person, so I was like, oh, yum. And, like, we haven't really seen the borders at all this season yet. So yeah. it was sort of fun. I enjoyed getting up a, a borders storyline plot um and it's those like young couple they're about to be parents they come to gray house they love the bed they love staying there and uh they they're then things get dicey when they're out at a restaurant and this 
bratty little girl is like having a fuss. And uh, I, I personally can really relate to that because I think both for the people that are with the bratty little girl and trying to tame them in a restaurant, that's super stressful. But it's just like stressful for all involved, I think. And uh, so <laughs> they're like, oh my gosh, like what are we gonna, what have we gotten ourselves into? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe I'm just like super numb to that stuff, but the kid didn't seem that bratty. Oh. She was just like, I don't really want to eat this food. Like, I... why'd you take me to this weird cafe? <laughs> I'm a child. Oh, and the I... guy was like, uh, how about this? And she's like, what? I felt, I felt normal. Like I, I, I'm, that's just like a, a angry child. It's not a brat. I thought she was brat, but she did kind of warm up at the end but, uh, but yeah, she was making a scene. Rachel, have you ever been hangry? What's that? <laughs> I, I have. Um, I, I, I think it's, uh, it's just an awkward situation, I think, for everybody. Like, it's hard when you have kids, like, taking them to a, a crowded restaurant, and it's hard for the people at the crowd. It's just stressful, I think. Doing stuff with kids is stressful, in my opinion. Um, and, you know, I thought about... A, it's so funny because the kids will often see things so differently. My, um, my uh, cousin, uh, my aunt had decided to take her, when her kids were little, had decided to take them blueberry picking. So this mm-hmm. was going to be like a fun, because they were in upstate New York. This is going to be like a fun family activity. And like, it was completely miserable the whole time, from my aunt's perspective, at least. Everybody was just complaining and whining and difficult and frustrating and... And so she was just like, oh, and then <laughs> I guess the next year she somehow got brought up and her, uh, one of her, one of her younger sons was like, oh, that was so fun. <laughs> we need to go do that again. And I think that that happens a lot with like, we don't think the kids have taken anything out of our, you know, certain experiences. I was just like, oh, this was just terrible, but they're having a great time. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, so, but anyway, this couple, like, they are stressed out by seeing this kid misbehave, and, um, so the father especially kind of freaks out, and... They'll be fine in two months. I'm not even worried. <laughs> well, they were fine, basically, by the end of the episode. They have a good talk. Um, he wants to leave early, and she, so they have a good talk, and... I did think it was kind of funny. So there's a fight between Abigail and her dad when, when, uh, she's like, um, I called and canceled all of my accounts, uh, and you can't do this and whatever. And, and she says, she says something. So the dad is there and, uh, and, uh the, of this couple dad's there. And, uh, she's like, I was like, Clay, by the way, just for sake of giving him oh, a was name. it Clay? Okay. Mm-hmm. Anyway, he's there and Abigail says, this guy over here knows more about being a father than you do. I just thought that was kind of funny. I oh, like talking about this guy. Again, it can be sort of awkward for, uh, for him. I thought that was, was kind of funny. And uh, of course, you get a little bit of Cassie's intuitive charm when he comes in and asks about ice cream and says, you wouldn't have raspberry ripple. But of course, Cassie has raspberry ripple. Of course she does. She's Cassie. <laughs> yeah. And then finally, Cassie gives uh, them a book that her and Grace used to like to read called One Otter and 21 Rabbits. What do you think, Amber? Does that sound like a fun book? I mean, it's fine. I died when he was like, what's it about? And she's like, oh, an otter and 21 rabbits. Yeah. Lol. It's the best. It reminded me a little bit of this book called The Naughty Little Hamster. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just like, I don't know, 15 pages of where did that naughty little hamster go? Where is that naughty little hamster? And like, that's literally the entire book. It's just those words over and over. Yeah. When I first read it as an adult, because I loved it as a kid, I was like, this book is hysterical because it is, it's, it's literally just about a naughty little hamster. The end. <laughs> like it doesn't. Yeah. It's like a, a the, um, Brian Regan thing about Dora the Explorer. He's like, I'm watching it. And there's this character, the map. And they start singing the map song. I am the map. I am the map. I am the map. <laughs> he's like, he's, it's really funny. He's like, uh, 
and the guy was expected to come up with this song, forgot about it, last minute, executives are there. <laughs> Like the map, the map, the map. <laughs> but I, I do happen to know that my sister writes children's books and they're they're very, very challenging. <laughs> I think it depends on what level you're writing yeah. it for. For those board books, most of them it's about the illustrations more than the yeah. text. But anyway, so it's funny. And so that was sweet. I enjoyed like just because we hadn't gotten any of that this season. Uh, I enjoyed a couple storyline at the um but I love that with Cassie which is kind of like solving people's problems or or getting people together or whatever I really enjoy that so mm -hmm. all right then we had Martha she was planning a women's entrepreneurs like council luncheon thing mm -hmm. starts out at the bistro she's talking and that's where she talks to Abigail's dad and he shows her Abigail's picture as a child and she decides to make these signs in these female um, run businesses showing where the entrepreneur started in high school and where they ended up. And so this was kind of fun. You got to see all of these actresses, uh, their high school yearbook pictures with their current pictures. Um, and so they had one at the bistro and they had one at the, um, uh, at the uh, flower shop. And um, I don't know. What do you think about this initiative that Martha's starting? Um, I'm a sucker for high school photos. So really anything that gets more high school photos out in the universe, I'm on board for. Yeah. Um, I also really, I just love everything Martha does. Even like something as basic as just basically being an excuse to see old pictures of people. Mm -hmm. It was great. She pulls everything off so wonderfully. And I love Catherine mm -hmm. Fisher. Yeah, she's the best. Um, and I did, there were a couple, I did think it was funny when she said, she says, ladies, pinkies up and pastries down. She's so funny. That was good. She's incredible. Like, she's I just... guarantee you, don't you agree that that must, you know, she said she's like, comes with five, five suggestions and she, uh, and then she ends up only getting two. You remember that part in the interview? Like, mm -hmm. three are crazy. And then two she ends up getting. I bet you that was a Catherine Disher line. I mean, that was an ad, but who knows? But I thought it was funny. And then also she says, uh, she's like, we all have bags beneath our eyes. Uh, and, then, and then they're all like, like <laughs> Cassie and, and I are like, uh, no. And <laughs> she's like, honestly, why do I continue to live in a town where all the women are beautiful or so pretty? <laughs> right? Oh, That's she's so funny. funny. But also, didn't that make you be like, oh no, are they foreshadowing when she leaves? Oh. I know, I know, I'm so worried. Oh, but um, but yeah, it was a funny moment, and you just saw like Abigail and Cassie like looking at her like, uh. But um, but anyway, and then the other, the last plot um, box or whatever section of this episode, you have Grace. So Noah is back uh, in this episode, and him, him and Grace are playing Risk. Have you ever played Risk? Yes, of course I've played Risk. I'm a human being. <laughs> what do you, I think that Risk is the longest game that you can play. It takes. It depends on the rules and how good you are at rolling dice. <laughs> I guess I haven't played it in a long time, um, but uh, but yeah. So they're playing Risk, and uh, she uh, says um, that she. I feel like Dolly Madison fighting off the British Army in the White House. So this was a fun poll because because Dolly Madison is actually really a cool character from history. And mm -hmm. I completely agree with Grace that a Dolly Madison movie would be awesome because uh, she's a really interesting character. She was she kind of revolutionized the whole idea of the first lady, kind of created what we know of as the first lady uh, now. And she did save George Washington's painting and a bunch of other historical documents. And she was like really a key figure in like getting and in, in having kind of an entertaining in a way that was like politically significant. She would gather people that she knew that were needed for certain bills and certain things and like basically kind of wine and dine them to get them on the right side. And so mm -hmm. she was very important in kind of starting the first lady as this person who was like a real like active politically aware person who made a difference if that makes sense 
And uh, so anyway, I thought it was sort of a fun moment. You see, like, they're trying to show that Grace is really interested in history and not as interested in math. Yeah. Yeah, basically. I mean, look at Grace getting all these new ideas this season. Like, (laughs) oh, I'm in drama. I love history. Oh, I also love, I love writing. I love being a doctor, but I hate math. Yeah. I just think it's just funny, but. And so she's going on this math tournament and uh, and Sam's like, are you ready? Are you, you studied up on your polygons? And she's like, yeah, I got this. <laughs> like, no problem. <laughs> and uh, so she goes and she does have it. She knew every question on the polygons uh, and she won the tournament. And at the end of the tournament, she's just kind of not very excited about it. And he's like, whoa, why aren't you very excited about it? And I also, I did like how, He's like the only one to cheer for his kid. And they're like, please hold all. <laughs> all yeah. You know, I just love the Sam and Grace scenes. And when he was like, yes, that's yeah. my kid. I was like, yeah, it's your kid. Yeah. I loved it. And yeah. then it was so funny. No Nick in this episode, by the way. Yeah. Which was but- good because I don't know if I could take a, a whiny Nick and the dad character. I, I That would have been a lot. Of- but it was funny to me because I was like, yeah, he doesn't really have a lot to cheer on for Nick, does he? Yeah, that's true. And not like saying that Nick doesn't have skills and isn't like gifted in his own way. Mm-hmm. But Nick's not really like a, a joiner. Yeah. Yeah, the only thing I can even think of is when he, you know, went to in London and was sort of big into that. But Did he go? He didn't, they didn't even go. But he was like really involved in the club and stuff. I mean, I guess. That's the only thing I can think of. (laughs) But anyway, and so I really, it was a really sweet moment, though, where Sam tells Grace about how he had the scholarship. I think it was for, like, biology, or I can't remember. But anyway, he had this scholarship, and uh, but he didn't have any passion for it. And basically, his message to Grace was, life is too short to not be doing something that you love, just, just to get, like, college credit, or just to you know, whatever, and uh, that that find something you love, and the world will kind of reward you for for that if you have passion for it. And and uh, I I thought that was a nice moment. For yeah, between them, yeah. I th- they're just so great. They're chemistry. Kind of, like when they are together on screen, it's just magic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I really I think that Sam is really great almost in any pairing that he's like. James Denton is just. It's just really charismatic guy, I think. Like, when he's with Martha, those scenes are always fun. When he's with uh, Cassie, those scenes are, there were some cute moments between the two of them in this. Uh, he's just, he's just a charismatic guy, I think. Can I just ask, wouldn't it be amazing if there was, like, some sort of a hashtag reason and Martha and Sam and Grace were all trapped somewhere and they had to figure their way out? Yeah. That would- just the three of them together? Like, uh-huh. um, like, I don't like, know. Like, even if it was like an escape room, just something like, just, just for yes. fun. Like, that would be fun. I and heard. like, Martha would be all like flustered and like, <laughs> Sam and Grace would be delightful. Yeah. That could be a fun thing for like, the Halloween movie. I could see them sort of working in maybe, a, maybe even a haunted house kind of thing. That would well, no, no, no. What they would be like, what it would really be is they're like, oh no, we've accidentally stumbled into a Merriwick <laughs> trap and now we have to figure our way out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but Sam did, t- maybe he's getting some of this intu- intuition because he totally called on the polygons. Like he... <laughs> Mate? Hey! Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that was basically the episode. We get at the, the very end of the episode is Abigail telling her dad, maybe I'll stop by sometime and see you, which... And I'm like, maybe don't. Just yeah. leave him alone. Yeah. Don't, because it's he's a toxic human being, and definitely hold on to your purse the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would say. Um, but there you go. So that was, uh, yeah, not my favorite episode, but it did have some cute moments, so what are you going to do? And uh, do you remember, I don't even, I forgot to write down what was the tease for next week. Did you write? Next week, it's called Family Time, and I hope it's mostly just 
Cassie, Sam, Grace, and Nick, but oh, they yeah, go to the yeah, lake yeah. house and yeah. trouble, 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 trouble. Yeah. So they're being kind of, Nick is being ornery, of course. And, uh, and yeah, that looks, that looks fun. That looks enjoyable. So, uh, there you go. We have that to look forward to next week. So that's the episode. Let us know uh, in the comments or on Twitter what you thought of the episode. Uh, if you liked it, didn't like it, what you thought. And also, uh, yeah, make sure you listen this week. We have our interview with Lee Friedlander, who is the director of Royally Ever After and some of our other favorite Hallmark movies. That was really fun. We posted that on Monday. And uh, we also have a regular episode, which aired yesterday, uh, that we talked about the Meghan and Harry uh, movie and the Meghan Markle Hallmark movies. So, and Amy Lynn Craig was joining us for that. This was really fun. And uh, yeah, this weekend on Hallmark Channel, we have Royally Ever After. And then we have a new episode of The Good Witch. And next week, we'll be talking about Royally Ever After on the podcast and the royal wedding. So it should be super fun. And so lots to look forward to. Again, let us know what you think. And uh, Amber, where can people find you? As always, I'm at Amber Brainwaves on Twitter. And that's it. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews on iTunes and on YouTube. We're doing a lot of really fun stuff over at my channel. We have Muppet May that we've been doing, uh, which is a lot of fun. And so check that out. I'd really appreciate it. And make sure you're following the podcast on uh, YouTube and on iTunes. We really appreciate your uh, thumbs up and your ratings and reviews. If you have a chance, uh, that is very helpful. And also make sure you're following us on social media, on uh, Twitter and on Instagram and everywhere else. We try to post daily and have a lot of fun conversations. So it's a lot of fun. And thanks so much. And we will talk again next week. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.